Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our Steno Royalty Q&A today. Thank you all for coming so early, at least the Californians or the West Coast people. <laughs> um, um, today, I mute everybody, except for Jay, we'll unmute Jay. All right, I lost Jay here. Um, uh, no, can can you hear me? Yeah, I can still I, hear you. I think when you're talking, your picture will show up. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, all right. So today we are very excited to have. Hey, hey Tatiana. <laughs> um, Jay or Juan Ortega aquí yes. con nosotros y como vamos a hablar de bilingüe, tal vez deberíamos hablar en español ahora. Mm. Perfecto. Buenos Or maybe días. not. Sorry, guys. Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, no, we will definitely uh, talk in English for now, at least. Um, so, uh, Juan Ortega, I met you because I think on Facebook we were talking about Spanish, you know. Um, right. But coming to know Jay, I have uh, found him quite intriguing, the work he does bilingually. Uh, tell us, first of all, a little bit what drew you to this steno profession in the beginning. How did you even hear of it? Uh, well, I guess, uh, like many of you know, our colleagues, I, uh, in high school, I was very <coughs> fortunate enough to hear about it right before I graduated uh, in my senior year. I was taking a uh, business course, and so they, you know, had announced that there was going to be a high school representative, you know, from a college, uh, go and give out a presentation. Uh, so I, I was like, oh, okay, I'm definitely not going to, you know, miss that day. I'm definitely going to be, you know, present for that to see, you know, what it is. I, I, I'm always, you know, intrigued when you have, you know, speakers coming in and everything. And so uh, I went and Sure enough, the high school representative that went was from uh, Co Reporting Institute of Dallas, where I attended. And uh, she went throughout the presentation, showed us, you know, the little green olive machine that we love. And, you know, uh, and so they, that's when they, she said, oh, you know, this is, you know, Co Reporting and this is, you know, the, the, the writer and showed us everything about it. And I've always been fascinated with uh, typing. So growing up, I always loved, you know, computers and typing on the keyboard. I also loved playing video games too, but uh, I guess maybe that's why, you know, it drew me to uh, type and I would always, you know, make myself type faster. And so once they uh, explained, you know, what core reporting was, because at that time I didn't know uh, what it, in, uh, it all entailed and, uh, and everything. So... Um, that's really what drew me. I mean, I got hooked. I, I said, oh, wow, that's, you know, you can make this a career and, and you know, to be able to write on the machine and, and uh, how do they do that? You know, it's, the keys are all black and, and everything. So that's, that's, that's pretty much what drew me to it. And so uh, immediately after I graduated from high school, uh, I graduated in May 2006, and uh, May, June, so July, I remember it was about to be, you know, uh, 4th of July, and that's, I think it was there, a few days thereafter when I, I joined Core Reporting Institute of Dallas, and I started my journey. Great, that's so great, and, and so uh, how long did it take you to get through school? Well, it took me about Three years, of course, you know, going in, they said, you know, it was a two-year program and to get the associates. It actually ended up taking me about three. Um, I was, for the most part, a full-time day student there. And, uh, but I also had a full-time job. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was actually one point where I actually had like two, like a full-time and a part-time. And then I actually switched from day school to night school. And so that's you know that's why it took me about about three years to finish and that coming out of school what did you start doing what was your first job or jobs well i went in 
immediately to cap uh, card captioning on site. I actually did before I came out of school. I did uh, a little bit of on site card, but uh, one of my many positions that I had while in school, I would also do um, transcription work. And uh, that's pretty much where I started doing my transcription work. I did it in English, but I also did it in Spanish. Um, and so I, I didn't use the steno writer much then. I uh, was just, you know, pretty much typing it, uh, you know, on the keyboard. But um, it was there where I started thinking, okay, well, you know, there's a way I, I, can, I can do this with, you know, with the writer. And so I started thinking of ways, you know, to add, add into my dictionary and little by little, I started uh, implementing that. Um, but I didn't fully end up adding a lot of entries until, you know, af after I got out and, and everything. So, but I went in first into CART, uh, doing on-site, and then I did, uh, started doing remote, remote CART, and then, just get into the um, freelance, you know, core reporting and, and the whole legal side. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I know I've, I've had this question from, from students before uh, who where their English isn't their first language and if they can still do this job, if English isn't their the language, their mother tongue, let's say, uh, obviously you, uh, you told me that Spanish was your first language. And right. here you are being very successful in both languages. So do you think that that slowed you down at all or inhibited you becoming a, a cart provider and a reporter uh, by not having English as your first language? No, no, not at all, actually. Uh, well, I mean, to my advantage, I did learn uh, English uh, as a second language early on, but I definitely feel that it's something that's, that's doable. I mean, we learn pretty much every day. We learn something new every day. So um, I'm actually even kind of trying to see if I may even learn a third language too, you know, uh, but that do it, be, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> definitely. I mean, there's, there's many people out there that, that do that know like three, four, even five languages. A lot of my colleagues and, you know, coworkers that have that I've worked with, you know, they know about three languages and I'm like, wow, that's, that's, to me, that's impressive. Uh -huh. So, um, but no, definitely, I, I think it's, it's doable. And uh, as long as, you know, put in the work, putting in the work and uh, you'll definitely be able to, you know, accomplish it. So you came out of school, obviously you had steno and English, steno to English. You were transcribing and you were typing the Spanish and decided you wanted to make it easier on yourself and do it with Steno. Uh, so how long did it take you to build up that Spanish dictionary? And then when did you start getting jobs where you actually used the Spanish also? Well, it took me a couple of years, I, I want to say, because at first when I started, I mean, I was focusing more on, obviously, on my English. and. Uh, Little by little, I started building my dictionary until, you know, a couple of years, uh, really like about three or four years ago, I, I said, you know what, I'm just going to focus on building my dictionary in Spanish. And, and yeah, I mean, I pretty much have it now to where it's pretty much the same. I have like about 100,000 entries in my English dictionary. Uh, but in my Spanish, it's not that far apart. Is I, I have about ninety four thousand. Wow. So, um, but I, I after I started that, I then started taking my uh, Spanish uh, card classes, card captioning classes, and then uh, once, of course, it was you know developed, and then I said, okay, well, I'm gonna move on to you know bigger, bigger opportunities, and and yeah, sure enough, they they came the bigger opportunities and now I do arbitrations and I do anything really Spanish. I still do my card captioning in Spanish, but I also do, you know, arbitration hearings or any other type of hearing in Spanish. So you mentioned Spanish card classes. Is that an actual course you took? 
Oh, no, no. These, these are uh, classes at, at universities or even actually even elementary schools, too. So you were, a cart, schools. you were a cart provider for Spanish classes? Cart pro cor correct. Oh, cart wow. For Spanish classes. And they have, um, you know, sometimes you have very easy uh, classes as, you know, as far as like Spanish 1 or Spanish 2, Spanish 3. I think they have up to either Spanish 5 or probably even more. Like, it's just the different levels of of you know advanced Spanish and so um, that's what I do as well. So do you ever find yourself getting confused like if you're writing in one or the other or is it just flow out naturally because it's just your fingers just know? No it, it flows out I want to say it flows out naturally especially because it's it's phonetic. Now uh, whenever as far as like confusion goes sometimes when I'm taking English, you know, court case, English hearings, and uh, they have an interpreter there. And of course, you know, the transcript is in English, but I automatically want to, <laughs> I hear the interpreter, you know, speaking Spanish, and I'm like, oh, I want to write, but I'm like, oh, wait, no, I, I have to write the English. And so, and so that's, I, I want to say that's the only confusion part, but other yeah. than that, I mean, it's, 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 I just pretty much go with the flow. Yeah, yeah, that's I can see where that would happen for sure. Um, tell us about maybe an arbitration you did, or you told me a story about an arbitration, uh, quite challenging, that you were went down to I think it was Panama, and uh, you thought you were just going to be doing English. Tell us, tell us that story. Well, uh, so it was last year where I went to uh, Panama City, Panama, for an arbitration. And uh, at first, I, I understood that it was going to be just Spanish, uh, Spanish hearing. So I said, okay, you know, we can, we can do that, especially if it's just Spanish, you know, just have my Spanish dictionary ready to go and set up and, you know, start the job. So uh, once I get there, I, I didn't even know that there was going to be an interpreter there. And once I get there, um, I start, you know, looking at the venue and, and seeing, you know, the whole setup and everything. And uh, I find out, you know, I, I met the individual who I thought was an attorney, but he was actually a, uh, an interpreter. And uh, he introduced himself and uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I didn't know there was going to be an interpreter. And he's like, yeah, uh, apparently I didn't know that I was going to be providing, you know, simultaneous interpreting. So I was like, oh, wow. Uh, and, and I asked him, I said, so are you here, you know, alone? Because I'm pretty much I've, I've been in so many different cases, even English cases where there's, you know, interpreters. And if you have a long day, uh, whether it's a jury trial or trial or, or just a long hearing, I mean, they have like two, I've even seen sometimes even three uh, interpreters, especially to do, you know, simultaneous work. And so, the interpreter, um, he said, yeah, I'm here, I'm here alone, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing this uh, simultaneously, I just found out yesterday, and I said, oh, okay, so um, we before, said, before you go on, I'm sorry to interrupt, let me interrupt you, okay. though, because some people might not know the diff you know, what simultaneous translation means, as opposed to um, when they do it one by one, so can you explain that a little bit? Oh, yes, so simultaneous it's pretty much interpretation of where they're interpreting every individual who is speaking in the, in the audience, in the hearing. Um, whether they're, if they're speaking in English, then they're going to be uh, in, interpreting it in, in Spanish, uh, you know, for the Spanish speakers. And then if they're speaking in Spanish, they're going to be interpreting it in English for the, for the English speakers. So that's how that works. And also, uh, simultaneous means they're doing it at the same time. So consecutive would be somebody asks a question in English, they pause, the Spanish interpreter interprets it in Spanish to the witness, the witness answers in Spanish, and the interpreter speaks one at a time. Simultaneous, the interpreter kind of leans into the witness and is just kind of speaking as everybody else speaks. So it's That's a little right. bit, it's a little bit uh, daunting, I will say, <laughs> especially when you understand both languages. So. Right, and it, and especially when you know they they all start talking at once, of course, and then yeah. uh, they they want the transcription only in Spanish, so they don't, you know, they mm -hmm. wouldn't want the transcript to be 
you know, Spanish and English, you know, to be both. I think that probably could have made it maybe a little bit easier. Still would have been a challenge, but, um, but yeah, so that, that arbitration went like that to where uh, the interpreter was there doing the simultaneous. And so, uh, I mean, once they started, I, I had to wear, you know, pretty much headphones like I'm, like I'm wearing now. And so I'm used to, of course, you know, wearing them in, in both ears. So as I'm, you know, sitting there writing, I'm, I'm writing to what, you know, they're, they're speaking in Spanish. And then if they go into English, well, I have to write to what the interpreter is speaking since, you know, he's the official there. And so what made it very challenging, of course, is, you know, the, the, the speed that we're going fast, even for the interpreter, which, I mean, he did a, really did a phenomenal job. He, he was a, a, a great, inter he's a great interpreter. And so, um, but yeah, that's what made it very challenging as far as that goes. Um, because I had to like take out the headphone and put it back in. And by the time I did that, I mean, <laughs> they, were, they were going so fast that, you know, like, oh, you know, hold on, hold on. And, and uh, but yeah, we finally got through it. Uh, it was actually two weeks. They were separate. It wasn't two, you know, consecutive weeks, but it was one week in November uh, after Thanksgiving. And then the uh, second week was in the middle of December. So can you write, do you think you can write as fast in Spanish as you can in English? Are you pretty equal? Yes, I feel I'm pretty equal. I mean, I definitely, uh, since my practice has been more in English, then I, 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 it comes, it flows easier. But of course, the Spanish, since I understand it, since I know it, and uh, it also flows, but I want to say the English, but I want to say they're pretty much close, uh, you know, with each other. I mean, they're, they're very close. I can, I can do both. How much time do you spend enhancing your writing, I'll say, or practicing? Well, practicing, uh, now, I mean, I do tend to spend at least 15 minutes because I'm, I'm not sure if you know, I think you're also part of it, but uh, there's the 100-day uh, challenge yes. group that, yes. that we have. And so we're, I'm, I'm in that as well. And so I try to, you know, spend minimum at least 15, you know, minutes. Uh, but there's a lot of times where I spend a lot more than that. I'm um, just, you know, writing and, and adding stuff to my dictionary. Uh, I think it's really, really important to more than just, you know, banging on the keys and writing. And, and of course, you know, you try to gain speed. But one thing that I did a lot when I was in school is, uh, I really focused on that dictionary. I think, I mean, it's, it's really, it's pretty much the foundation, I would say, of, of being able to write, you know, and, and knowing it inside and out and knowing it like pretty much like the palm of your hand. <laughs> yes. So, so to speak. What kind of practice do you do? What things do you practice right now in each, in either language or both? Well, I do a lot of uh, practicing with, you know, just the audios. We have, a lot of dictation material from the, you know, 100 uh, challenge, the users group there. Uh, but I also tend to practice, you know, like Spanish news, um, especially to, you know, build on that dictionary, keep on, you know, building more. Um, right now, even though, you know, my dictionary is, my Spanish dictionary is, is great. I, I'm now I'm trying to, you know, implement, of course, more phrases mm -hmm. there as well uh, in my Spanish dictionary. So are you just making those up yourself or you have, you have, you found some place where uh, you can, you know, kind of like in English, I know I go, there's lots of places we can find briefs and phrases. How about for yeah. Spanish? Well, for Spanish, uh, there's really not much. Um, I'm, so I'm pretty much making it myself. I'm pretty much going through it and, uh, you know, building off, you know, sort of, you know, building my own little theory pretty much. Mm -hmm. Great. That's a great. Um, are there any questions uh, anyone would like to ask right now? I find this fascinating, probably because I speak Spanish and I am building my own Spanish dictionary, uh, but it's kind of slow going. But it's fun. I'm finding it very fascinating. Yep. It's fun. And it's fun to make up briefs and, and everything. So here's a question. How long did it take you to get through school? You did mention in the beginning, uh, it took you three years. You had switched to night school. Right. I switched back and forth. I was pretty much full-time, a full-time student, then switched to night school briefly, and then came back 
uh, as a day school student. And I said, okay, I gotta, you know, gotta chop, chop, hurry up. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and so got, got through it, you know, in, in about three years. This, this uh, picture I have on the screen right now is uh, an example of writing in uh, English and Spanish. Uh, was this a cart, a cart class you did, of Span a Spanish class? Yes, yes, that, that is actually a uh, Spanish cart class. And of course, in, in, in Spanish, in the cart classes, there are times where some instructors, they tend to speak more uh, English and then of course just throw in the uh, Spanish words you know and what they mean uh, but there are other classes where the instructors they either speak mainly Spanish or if not they just combine both and and they just go you know back and forth between the Spanish and the English uh, there's a question here which theory did you learn I learned a mixture um it was pretty much a stenid stenid theory but um in core reporting school they actually combined their own they created their own which they called it the creed theory which is core reporting institute of dallas and i want to say they combined i know it was stenid uh and i want to say a little bit of philadelphia clinic theory and as well as digitext mm -hmm. um, there's so many out there but i i mean i pretty much took you know chunks from each and every one that I can get mm -hmm. did you when did you start shortening your writing I know Stan Ed for example is pretty write out intensive at one point did you start phrasing and briefing and all of that well I actually went through that uh in school because what and that was the whole purpose they they noticed that um uh, the Stan Ed you know was a little bit uh it, write it out theory so that's why they kind of combined it and they created their own. So they did introduce us, which, you know, it was great. And I found it a great advantage um, to uh, introduce briefs and phrases early mm -hmm. on. So uh, I would say, you know, early on, as I was going through school, that's when I started, you know, shortening my writing. And uh, and now, I mean, it's just something that I'm, that I'm still looking forward to do um, in shortening my, my writing now and implementing, you know, some of, you know, Mark Kislingberry's uh, theory as well. I, I believe he, I'm not sure if he learned uh, his beginning theory was Philadelphia Clinic Theory. Uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm just trying to shorten it as much as possible. Here's a question from Katiana. If you could do school all over again, what would you do differently? Well, definitely practice a lot more than I did. Uh, even though, and I think that may be the number one thing that a lot of uh, students or, or, you know, seasoned reporters would say <laughs> when they when they look back and they said, oh, you know, I, I should have, you know, practiced more. And, and uh, if possible, uh, I would have definitely not have any job and, and focus more in school. And uh, yes, definitely keep on shortening that writing and, and practice a lot more uh, while, it, while in school. And, uh, because it's definitely hard to, I think it's, it's a lot harder when you're working, when you're you know, a seasoned reporter or professional reporter and you're working now to you know, sit down and practice. That's why it's, I, I'm also trying to implement the practice now. If it's not something that I, that I do at the beginning of, of my day, like a, like a lot of other you know, colleagues of mine do, they, they do it early on and I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense, you know, to do it very early so you can kind of get it out of the way and then, you know, go on by your day because by the time you finish your day, then yes, I mean, you're, 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 you're pretty much drained. <laughs> yes. By then. Zenobia asks, any tips for students? It is challenging to know what to study. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I would say, the well, yeah, the number one tip would be definitely to keep up with the practice, but also more than that, uh, to always always look to in in your dictionary, always you know, and and just have an open mind and you know keep practicing, shorting in your writing, um, and and just uh, try. I I'm pretty sure a lot of you know students and even seasoned reporters. I know I did this when I was a student, but 
um, any anytime you hear you know words or, or you speak with somebody you automatically think steno like, <laughs> okay how would I write that how would I write that and so that's something that I would always used to do and another thing too um, I know there's some you know reporters that or some instructors that recommend to you know lower lower the speed down and and yeah I, I do agree with that you know lowering the speed you're you know, to your tar target speed but I remember as I started school, uh, even though I was like in my 60s or 80s or 100s, I always wanted to listen to faster dictation. Um, so pretty much, even if I didn't, you know, get, any, get anything down, but just listen to it so that I can kind of, you know, get used to it, get used to the speed, um, and then, you know, think of, you know, the words and phrases and, and start just implementing that and always wanted to define, always defining, always defining, either defining on the fly or, you know, just when you work on your dictionary, you just go in your dictionary, not even write, not even, you know, do any of that and then just, you know, define. And now, nowadays, I mean, with our software, we've got a lot of, you know, tools that we can use, uh, you know, like Dictionary Builder, where you can, you know, uh, get, a document just import a document and it can find uh if if you have any uh words phrases that are not in your dictionary i mean mm -hmm. it'll just automatically tell you so i mean i think that's great that it, it's pretty much advanced now <laughs> very yeah. advanced uh do you think your spanish has improved as a result of stenoing in spanish asks katiana oh definitely yes yeah, definitely now and especially i mean the more uh, the more work you take and, and uh, well, ever since I started early on when I started doing, you know, transcription, uh, Spanish transcription while I was in school. Um, I mean, I, that's one thing that I never, I never let go. I mean, I, I always try to keep on top of my Spanish and, and even now, and, and that really, that really helps you. Uh, I just, I believe any, any language that, you know, you learn that you just got to keep up with it. I, I guess that's why it makes it easy for, you know, folks who like no other languages, for instance, French, if they, you know, they, they're in, in France and, you know, they learn French or if uh, they're in Argentina and they learn Spanish and they just, you know, keep up with it. And that's how they're able to do it a lot more easier. I want to know how you keep your love of this profession alive. You, you, I can tell you actually, you absolutely love it. Um, how do you keep that alive and not get burned out? Well, um, I, there's definitely, you know, if you become a member, of course, if, of the uh, National, you know, Core Reporter Association and uh, all these, you know, other, your, your state, you know, uh, associations as well. Uh, so I do a lot of those uh, and like this year in Denver when we went, you know, to the convention and also, unfortunately, this was my first year that I, you know, missed Mary Ann's uh, empowerment conference, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've gone to, you know, her uh, empowerment conferences here in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, ever since uh, they started. Um, I think it was uh, back in 2014 or 2015 thereabouts. Uh, she started her empowerment conference, but that's how, uh, I mean, I just keep it alive and, and definitely, you know, engaging with, you know, our, my fellow reporters and, uh, you know, engaging with everybody in the profession and uh, even, you know, reporters that I see in, in court and, you know, hearings anywhere that I'm at. I mean, we just just get, you know, overjoyed when we, when we see each other. We're like, oh, you know, how, how do you do this? Or or that or you know just ask questions and and uh yeah that's that's pretty much how i how i keep it alive nice yeah i definitely wonder about people who are non-reporters or cart providers that are walking by a bunch of us talking and what they would think <laughs> how we talk about like we'll obsess over a comma placement or talking about how do you write this or that they must wonder what the heck we're talking about <laughs> Oh yes, yes, and definitely. Well, you know the the uh, the groups in on on Facebook as well. You know, and you know you get to engage there a lot, and you get to see questions, interact, and so I I just think that that's that's great because I mean that just keeps you know adding adding more fuel. Yeah. So uh, Kathy had asked which theory did you learn, and you mentioned it was a Stened enhanced Stened at your school, and then right. she also asked, do you use macros very much? 
Yes, well, I actually need to use more macros, um, but uh, that is actually one of my little um, secrets in being able to do uh, Spanish and English simultaneous at the same time is through a macro. So uh, it's, it, it is you know, of great importance to use the macros, any macros that you can, that you can, there, there's so many out there that I'm sure I don't even know, probably even half of them, to be honest, <laughs> so, because I, I need to use more, but that is one that I do use whenever I, I might write my English and Spanish. And just uh, for anybody who might not know exactly what a macro is, it's um, either from your machine or the keyboard, a one stroke or one hit command, which tells your software to do a number of other things. Um, so it's it's uh, something a lot of them from the machine we can do and it maybe you can make corrections etc uh, how does your macro work help you with doing the Spanish and the English simultaneously what macro do you, are you using for that well it's pretty much a macro that you know was, I, I had created within case to where um, it so it's I have a uh, both dictionaries are separate. There's there's one that I have some you know words combined. Well, both of them actually have you know English and Spanish words combined. But the way the macro that I use helps me is because whenever I am writing you know in Spanish, they're speaking Spanish, so I'm writing Spanish. And if you know they change to just speaking English, you know the, if I'm using that Spanish dictionary. I might not have the whole entirety of my English dictionary in that Spanish dictionary. So uh, I use a macro so that it can automatically switch over to the uh, English dictionary. And if they're just going in English, you know, they say, I don't know, a paragraph in, in, in English or maybe even two paragraphs in English. And I'm just, you know, writing to my English dictionary. Uh -huh. And so once they, you know, switch back, then I have that macro that I hit and it switches back to that Spanish. Nice, nice. Very good. But Great. I, I, tend, I do tend to use my, the macros that I really use a lot. Well, of course, that one's one. Uh, but the other one is also, you know, to define on the fly, you know, when you hit, you know, def, def, and uh, you define the, you know, the, the names or any terms. Uh, and then also to identify, you know, speakers as well. Right. Um, so I use, I use a lot of those every day pretty much <laughs> yeah it's fun i love using the macros you uh you get home and everything's all beautiful you don't have to do as much correcting at home or whatever so um yeah all right any other questions looks like jay froze on us are you still there there oh, you yeah, are sorry. okay yes Yes. Sorry. All right. Anybody have any other questions? I really have found this fascinating. Uh, it's just something that you don't hear of often in our world. Um, uh, although there are, of course, you know, Spanish cart providers or providers who do Spanish class and stuff, but you actually do the whole job in Spanish or English, whichever one comes your way. Um, right. Whichever <laughs> one comes my way. And that, that is, that is just seems to me, um, such a an incredible uh, I can't even think of the words it's just amazing to me and uh, I really really admire you for that and and that you built your dictionary and you have 90,000 words in one and 100,000 in another it's uh, just a great testament to your uh, you know love of the career and that you want to do this and you enjoy doing this and etc so anybody else any questions I actually do have a question. Yes. Um, so obviously all our theories are taught for us, like in English, you know, the right hand, hand phrase enders are, you know, the GS is the shun and, you know, whatever, whatever other combination makes a certain sound. Do you, do you have to teach yourself different sounds like in Spanish, if that makes any sense? Uh, no, not not necessarily. I mean, you just listen uh, to the you know the words phonetically. Uh, the the shan. Uh, I'm trying to think of an instance where I could probably even use that. Um, comprensión, aplicación. Yeah, comprensión, aplicación. Uh, mm -hmm. I would I would write that you know as well uh, with with the shan. Uh, but 
yeah, I mean, you just listen to it phonetically and, you know, you just write it, you know, like the word, you know, mañana, you know, write it, write it out. And then, of course, you know, you want to write it out and add that into your dictionary. And then, of course, from there, you know, still shorten your writing and shorten it to like, if you want to just say, you know, mañana or, or comprensión or aplicación in just one stroke, then you would hit it, you know, just in, in one stroke. I see. Thank you. No problem. Great. Well, this has been so exciting for me uh, because I do speak Spanish. So I'm just always excited to learn more. And I really appreciate your coming on and meeting with us. Um, I really consider you steno royalty oh. because of all you do. And uh, um, do you have, uh, I mean, would it be, could you have an email or something that we could give out so that in case anybody had any more questions for you? Oh, definitely, yes. It's uh, J underscore, just the letter J, not J-A-Y, just the letter J underscore, and then my last name, Ortega, 8806 at SBC, as is in Sam, B as in Bravo, C as in Charlie, global.net. All right, I have posted that in the chat box. And so if anyone has any more questions about how you might be able to also get into the not only steno world, so you're learning the language of steno if you're a student, uh, but also the Spanish to steno world, um, uh, you can give him an email, uh, email, shoot him an email, and uh, he'll let you know uh, or answer your questions. And um, okay, well, thank you so much for coming. I really, really appreciate it. And um, I will see you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone else. Thank you. thank you all for coming here so early and participating in this. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Definitely. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Bye-bye. All right. Have a great one.